Still loving this one from Justin Timberlake. Not a bad thing. Playing for you right here on 88.2 Sanyu FM. It is the hit selector. I am Crystal. And my guest today is DJ Carol on Celeb Select. Hello, my dear. Hey, Crystal. How are you? Good, thank you. Well, 50-50. 50-50. Yeah. Uh, suffering a bit with the flu. With the flu, but nothing too serious. Nothing too serious. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here, hosted by you, finally. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure. Yay. But it's nice to have you, Thank my you dear. so much. So, DJ Carol. People know you as DJ Carol. Yes. Just give us all your names. The ones from even the judges. <laughs> all the names. All the names. Mm. Well, my names are Carol Kisser. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Where were you born? Here, mm-hmm. Kampala. Yes. Born here. Um, last born of four. Oh, yeah, Only girl. Family. Only girl. <laughs> yes. How was that growing up? Three boys. Nice. Did you have to fight for everything? No, you know when you're the last born and you're the only girl, then you practically get everything you want. Oh, <laughs> so they spoiled you? They gave you whatever you needed? Yes, mm-hmm. and I guess also being the only girl amongst three boys, mm. I was a tomboy, of course, mm. mm-hmm. for quite a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so mm. went to school, went to Aga Khan for my primary school. Okay. Then went to Kaboja for my secondary school. Mm-hmm. And then went to... Malaysia for university. Malaysia? Yeah. Okay. How was Malaysia? Awesome. Was it okay? It was awesome. I really loved it. Yes. Of course, in the beginning, Mm. I was like, no, I wanted to go to Macari. I wanted to be around, but my parents had a different idea. Mm -hmm. And till this day, I actually thank them. You thank them for that? Yes. Were you the first of your siblings to go to Malaysia? Yeah. I went with my brother, who I do follow. The two of us went together. Mm. Yeah. Around the same time. Okay. So you went there by yourself? No. And I mean, these days, uh, lots of people go to Ugandans. Like, there was a huge Mm. family, Ugandan family back there. And I still knew some people who was going to find their Ugandans. Oh, nice. Yeah. So... It wasn't really one of those, oh my God, I'm going to a foreign country. Mm. Am I going to find people I know? Okay. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And what about your parents? My parents are both here. I stay, I live with my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, My dad, both of them are alive though. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Stay in Bugolobi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just here. Just here. (laughs) Just here, here, yes. Okay. Where's your village? My dad's from the... Uh, my my mom's from the west, Mara, mm-hmm. um, Kashari, mm-hmm. and my dad's from the east. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So, what kind of child were you growing up? Apart from being a tomboy, were you quiet? Were you loud and naughty? Um, what would your mom say? <laughs> <laughs> I was sporty. Sporty. Mm-hmm. Uh, loud. I was stubborn. She told me I was really stubborn. Mm. Um, but. A little later, I sort of, I, I, I became reserved. I was that reserved kind of person. Mm. Yeah, I used I used to keep in a lot and used to stay in my corner, mm. do my things. Yeah, so. Okay. I was reserved, but then the sporty bit, of course, got me. Still gets you out there. Yeah, it still gets me out there. So when you say you were sporty, did you have dolls? Did you ever comb their hair? I think I had more cars. <laughs> <laughs> the dolls. I wasn't really. I've never really been the girly girl mm. kind of person. Yeah. So I had all. Well, mm. the dolls were there, but I think they were countable. <laughs> I had more of the cars and the guns and, well, and that all that sense. stuff. I was, also, I was really a tomboy. Yeah, with the big brother. So, what sports did you play in school? I was like an all rounder. Mm. I used to do. I used to do badminton. I used to do basketball. I used to do tennis. I used to do swimming. I was just like everywhere. Okay, was that also a thing in your family? Because those are a lot of different things. Uh, no, okay, not really. It wasn't, I don't know how, I don't even know <laughs> where it came from. Mm-hmm. Because my parents weren't that sporty, really. Mm. But I guess what made me also like that is they were the kind that didn't really want us to do a lot of the TV 
Mm. So um, during holidays, my mom would drop us off at Kampala Club in the morning because okay. she worked just next door ah. and picked us up in the evening. So you're forced <coughs> to learn or engage in a sport. You have to swim or play tennis. So that's really how, mm. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, people say that, you know, if you, you play a lot of sports growing mm -hmm. up, it, it really helps you later on in life. Do you mm. agree? Do you think so? Yes, I do agree. I think sport sport really does. It teaches so many things. It's not just really having a good time and but it teaches a lot of things. It teaches teamwork, it teaches discipline, mm. it teaches life skills. You have to learn how to get along with people. Mm -hmm. It so I think it has helped me <coughs> a lot that even right now I've still gone ahead with it mm -hmm. uh, maybe in a different angle I'm more into the management bit of it mm -hmm. but I think I am where I am now one of the reasons is because I kept on with the whole sport okay. aspect yeah so we're talking about sports but most people know you for the music side yeah so in school is that when you, you your love for music started to blossom yeah, um, my love for music started, I think, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was one of those scrapbook kids. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lyrics and all that, and, you know, getting those tapes, and the only way to rewind is putting a pen through it, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turning it round, because you want to get the lyrics of the actual song, and, mm -hmm. you know, so I loved music from back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing Did you collect up... collect even, like, back then? Your, you had your own tapes? I mean, I had like a disc man. I had, the, okay, before the disc man, of course, it was the tapes and stuff. My mm -hmm. brothers also loved music, so mm -hmm. I used to get their tapes, play them on a Walkman mm -hmm. and stuff like that, play them at home. And of course, upgraded to a disc man. Then, um, I mean, now the technology. And um, later on, I mean, growing up, when I grew up and all started work and everything, I mean, the love for music kept on and on and then with all this technology twitter i just started something called the friday playlist mm -hmm. and um everyone was sort of hooked but the funny thing is it was just like how you come up with 10 songs mm -hmm. and you make them a playlist every friday mm -hmm. so i used to just keep posting that on twitter and somehow people kept saying my god you have good taste that's a good playlist can you share it with me but it's just songs they're not mixed so I saw really? that, yeah, like so many people jumped on it, jumped on it. And um, I am a CEO of a digital agency. I run a company mm -hmm. called M Idea. Mm -hmm. So one of my clients at, at, at one point um, for the social media marketing was Samsung. Mm -hmm. And I proposed, <coughs> sorry, I proposed an idea called the Samsung Twitter party, which really gets people on Twitter to come and actually meet because you know you tweet people and you've never really met them in mm -hmm. real life and okay, one mm -hmm. of the things I also proposed to them was uh, coming on board for my playlist so we call it the Samsung Friday playlist and they sponsor it so we make it bigger than it was mm -hmm. and they did come on board for it and um, it, it like blew up like everyone was just every Friday there. I couldn't miss like people would be on my case like Thursday night we're <laughs> waiting we're waiting we're waiting, waiting. We're waiting. Mm -hmm. and um, before I started M Idea I used to work with an events company called Dash and before that MTN now Dash Events mm. the office was right next to Zone 7 uh -huh. so after <laughs> work just I next mean, door just next door <laughs> And um, mm. like the in-house DJs, I'd be the one telling them, have you had this jam? Mm. And they're like, but they're telling me, but you know, you, you, you love your music so much. We have a problem with DJs. Mm. DJs may know how to DJ, mm. but they're not really good with a selection of music. The music, yeah. So they're all like, why don't you just learn? I'm like, it's never that serious, really. I love music and that's it. It's so interesting how you just just kind of landed in it yeah so i was pushed uh, like no 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 you know what you're just going to be we'll teach you for free uh, aluda <laughs> was also supportive he's mm -hmm. like no man we'll do this because from your friday playlist you have good taste in music okay. we shall come back <laughs> yes we shall come back to this um i'm going to ask you now for your first song your first request okay my first request is john rambo by shiba <laughs> <laughs> why this one <laughs> I really, really, really like Shiba. I love her energy. I love her hard work. And just the fact that she comes from a really humble background. Mm. 
and I think 2016 and 2017 have been like her years. Mm. She's really gone all out mm -hmm. and she puts in the work. She really puts in the work. Come with me and take it to the next level. If you're ready, so give me a chat table. Let me protect ya. And no care about TV. Like you really go. Now, you mentioned that growing up, you were really sporty, 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 sporty. Did you compete when you were in school? Yes, oh. I did compete a lot. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> like in every sport. Every sport As from tennis to people. badminton to swimming. Exactly. Oh. Like every sport. And sport has gotten me far. Like um, in my form six, uh, while I was in Kaboja, I was chosen as one of the people to uh, amongst, I think we were about 10 to 15, they chose the most uh, active, sports active students mm -hmm. in the school okay. to go and watch the World Cup. And it was an all expense paid for trip. Oh my god. We goodness. went to Germany. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I mean, I'm in Form 6, you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Are my parents going to even let me? Mm -hmm. But they've been so supportive. Okay. And they were like, well, these opportunities come once. I mean, they're paying for everything. Mm -hmm. Why not? So that was my first. I mean, before that, it was lots of tournaments, mm -hmm. playing for Kaboja, basketball, mainly basketball. Mm -hmm. I ended up taking, uh, uh, choosing this one sport that I focused on, and that was basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but basketball has taken me. It's also your baby as well. Yeah, ways. it's my baby as well. I'm now a team manager of a ladies basketball team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I played for the team first, of course. Okay. As a player, then a captain, then a team manager. <laughs> wow. So I'm thinking, you know, you you were in school, you were playing all these different sports in S6. I mean, mm. you're putting in all that time and energy, and then you go away to Malaysia for university. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have an opportunity there to continue with your sports, or did was it I just did. like? Oh, you did. I did. I continued with sport as on the school. I mean, the university basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> Man, mm -hmm. got a couple of trophies there. Mm. Um, I really didn't stop, okay. and the way it is in Malaysia, the way the facilities are, mm. all the apartments, or the student complexes have a court, a pitch a tennis court a basketball court so mm. like they're all around you every apartment every 100 or 50 meters you have like a facility so mm -hmm. when so you're looking nice. out your window and seeing a court every morning i mean you're tempted <laughs> to play hey, <laughs> but bright. here you have to drive looking quite for a places, distance huh? to look for a place yeah so i did go in with it but what were you studying as well because i studied business it Oh, okay. And um, I guess that's why I ended up doing what I'm doing because mm -hmm. I'm all, I'm into digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's really in the mm -hmm. angle of business IT. Okay. So yeah. when, you, when you were done with your course and you came back, what, mm -hmm. what happened next? Did you have a job waiting for you? or? Um, during the holidays, I used to come back. Okay. I used to come home. And um, during the Malaysia holidays, I did internship with MTN. Mm -hmm. So when I got done... It was very easy for me to get in. Okay. <laughs> so I got in, mm. thankfully, mm -hmm. and I worked with MTN for a year. For one year? Yes. Mm -hmm. I worked um, in the marketing department mm -hmm. for a year. So they were supposed to, the deal was marketing for a year, and then they pushed me to IT after that year. Mm. But there were some changes in, and, you know, management and... I sort of wasn't comfortable leaving marketing okay. to IT because of uh, some stuff that was really going on. So I ended up... <laughs> what was that stuff that was going on? No, not like uh, something really big. I think um, there's a point in which, a point at which there's some Indians that came in to take over the IT department, MTN, okay. at some point. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and I don't remember what the company was called. So they were you were not really under MTN, like you were under them. Mm. So I wasn't really comfortable working with them. Okay, okay. I got so used to my peeps, and we had to move mm -hmm. and sit elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really comfortable with that, so I ended up... Um, working for an events company called Dash Events. So this is after the one year you moved yes. to Dash Events. This okay. is after the one year at MTN I went mm -hmm. to Dash Events. Mm -hmm. Worked with Tendo Kagwa mm -hmm. and a gentleman called Paul Kaheru. Mm -hmm. So we did lots of music events at Zone 7 and were handling a couple of events, corporate events and all that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you said before, you know, you know, you first started with just putting together a Friday playlist on yeah. Twitter, mm-hmm. and then you started seeing all these DJs, and they offered to help you. So when you were working at Dash events, was this around the same time you were also training? Exactly, that's around the same time. The fact that the Dash events office was—it's just a wall that separated the office <laughs> and Zone Seven. Yeah, you'd know when it's five p.m. You're hearing some songs in the background <laughs> playing, and yeah, so calling, it, it did. Calling, calling. <laughs> it did start then um, because. The equipment was right there. Mm-hmm. So they were like, what's the excuse, really? Mm-hmm. We're offering you the equipment. We're offering to teach you. We really think you should be a DJ. And I'm like, guys, nah. So it's not something you ever saw yourself no, doing? No, not at all. I do love music, but I didn't really see myself being a DJ. Never. It's not even something I thought of at <laughs> any one point. It didn't even cross your mind? No, not at all. So I did take the, take the lessons on mm-hmm. and... Um, I'm a, I'm a very fast learner because mm-hmm. I kept asking, how long is this going to take? And one of them was telling me, maybe like six months to a year. I'm like, I don't have that time. Does that mean you're impatient? <laughs> to, no, not impatient, but I'm looking at it like six months, as in I'm going to come every day just to do this for six months. I'd rather be enjoying the music, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. But it actually didn't take me six months. It mm. took me about a month and a half. Okay. And then they basically started giving me sessions at Zone 7. Mm-hmm just to get better keep practicing and all because it is all about practice yeah it is about practice so my first debut was um the samsung twitter party mm-hmm. <laughs> okay since i was behind it anyway i mm-hmm. said let me give them something i mean people at that time i hadn't really pushed it that i am a dj mm. so it was like a surprise people were like what mm-hmm. so when they see a poster of surprise performance of course they're thinking well not carol Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, if you would like to see what Carol looks like right now, <laughs> we are Instagram live. Uh, that's Crystal A. Newman. And of course, you can also follow the interview on Facebook. That's uh, Crystal Newman or Angela Newman Kavlu or their names. Basically, you'll find it there <laughs> on Facebook. But um, OK, so so you had your debut that went well. Then we started seeing your name going up for, for different events. Mm-hmm. Was that a very busy time for you? Or Yeah, I think after I did the first Last event, um, the phone calls were so many and I was a bit confused, like, okay, what happens now? Because I do have a job that's my core business. This is supposed this was supposed to be fun and just mm-hmm. like a one off. Mm-hmm. But um lots of corporates kept calling in and saying we're interested, we want you for a gig, we want you for so at that point um kinetic management group had to come in to help because Mm-hmm. First of all, you know when you're not doing when you're doing something just for the fun of it, you're not sure how to deal with it. How am I meant to price this? How am I meant am I meant to be the one to speak to client? Me- meant to be the one to speak to clients directly? Mm-hmm. Yes, you know yes. the professional side of things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, kinetic came in and helped me with all that. So they would they would deal with all my corporate. So they were managing gigs. you. So they yes. So kinetic was managing. Oh, okay, still is manages my gigs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, so I would just because it was hard. Like I don't know what to price. I don't know what to exactly, say. Yeah. So yeah, they helped with that, and um, it sort of made it professional. So I wouldn't deal directly with the clients. I would just be informed that on such and such a date you have to be here and have to be there. Yeah. So I decided, well, if I'm going to do this, I can't do it. I can't do an everyday thing. It has to be corporate gigs. Mm. Uh, Well, if they're not corporate, but it's not like a daily gig because Mm. I have another job. Yeah, yeah, full-time job. A full-time job, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to come back to that. All right, I'd like to ask you now for your second request um, from B2C as well as uh, the Good Life Boys. Yes. Um... I'm all about, I think you'll notice, that's the that's second local song. <laughs> I'm all about pushing local music yeah. because I think we really have so much talent. So B2C, I remember the first time I had these guys sing was at uh, one of these awards recently. And I'd never really seen them or heard of them. And I was like, wow, I think these guys have some potential. And... Um, that song is really nice. Mm. It's really, really nice. And with the industry, it's not really easy to come out as... There's some artists who have been upcoming for years. <laughs> upcoming, upcoming, yeah. upcoming. Sadly. Sadly, yeah. Because it's not easy. Mm. It's not as easy as people think. But um, 
Well, they have a few songs for now, but I think they're doing really good. Mm. And uh, it's nice to see that there are people out there who believe that if they push, they can get their songs all over the radio and we're now dancing to them as DJs are playing them. So mm. I really love these guys. Mm -hmm. First, mm -hmm. they sound like Radio and Weasel. <laughs> <I do. laughs> but yeah, I think um, I like the fact that they've come out and... And they're doing well. Yeah, and okay. they're doing well so far. Okay, here yeah. it is. You mentioned how, you know, it was very confusing at first. You did your first gig and then all of a sudden all these opportunities and then uh, Kinetic started managing you. Um, so how did you still balance after that? Did you continue working full-time job? And Yes, I did. I continued working full-time and the deal with Kinetic was I can't take on more than two gigs a month. A month? a month? Not even like one a week? No. Okay. That's how crazy it was. Mm -hmm. One, um, at most two a mm -hmm. month really because my job is a bit, it gets a bit crazy mm -hmm. and uh, all the clients want to deal with you directly, mm -hmm. you directly. And again, I have a team of about seven to eight people. I have to deal with that too, managing them. So. Okay, so what you said was at the time you were with Dash. And then after that, what happened? For you? I was with Dash just for a bit, a year, and then mm -hmm. started my own company. That's when you started your own company? Yes. Were you afraid to start it? Who encouraged you? Or you just said, let me dive right in? Like I said, um, in the start, I was so thankful to my parents mm. picking that university. Because mm. it, is, it is called Lim Kokwing University of Creative Technology. So they basically teach you to stand out be creative mm. not be normal mm. so when i left i kept saying i'm only going to work for someone for two years you gave yourself two years yes okay. <laughs> and i told my parents that and they kept saying nah what's the rush and i said i'm going to do it because mm. you see with life if you don't give yourself a target mm. you get too comfortable okay okay so the one year was in mtn and the other year was in dash and i said my time is done here don't care what I have in my bank account, but I'm starting. <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> so I mean, it's the first step. First step. So yeah, I did start, of course, with my very, you know, the mini laptops, mm -hmm. mini laptop, and I'm thinking, what do I call this company? M mm. idea. You know, you're filling in those forms and they ask you what's the company name, and I can't think of anything, and I'm like, okay, it's a marketing idea. It's my idea. M idea. That's so I just write M idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I register it and all that mm -hmm. and because of the connections MTN Dash events the people I kept interacting with mm. I just kept in touch with them okay. so when I started my company they're the first people I reached out to mm -hmm. to propose the whole idea of social media for business not mm. just for chatting and all that but for business so yeah mm. I started off alone when uh, working from home uh, my idea made five years in March, mm -hmm. so yeah, 2012. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I started off at home with a modem and a laptop <laughs> and moving around. And mm -hmm. uh, after some time, got one employee. I mean, kept trying to look for clients here and there. Mm. Fast forward, next this, the next year, I had about like four big client samsung being one of them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so i was able to afford an office okay so i a lot of people make the mistake of going for the office space yet yet you're not you know you don't have the clients bringing in the money exactly and that's i guess that's at the end of the day that's what makes businesses stop at some point because mm -hmm. you're thinking uh to be credible i need to be seated in an office but sometimes if you can't afford it why are you pushing it mm -hmm. yeah so it's until some money started coming in mm -hmm. and i was like okay i think i can afford an office okay so been at shumuk house for four years mm -hmm. yeah and we're still there okay my idea is still best there all right so yeah. you had a plan and you followed through with it yeah i followed through and i mean now i'm glad to say i employ eight people mm -hmm. it's nice to have a dream and you follow through on it mm -hmm. yeah and okay. it's going okay 
So we've we've heard about you know working and then you know starting your digital agency, and and also the DJing. But you said that you know sports is still very much part of your life and basketball is mm. so how did you continue to do that were you like playing on weekends still playing in the teams in the league i mean how did that work um f- first of all i know they're all listening ne? is listening in <laughs> a one challenge <laughs> um how did i even join the team while i was at kaboja mm. because of being involved in all sorts of sports we used to get people from out that would come in for friendlies and all mm. so <coughs> one time we were told that there's a ladies basketball club that plays in the league that's coming mm-hmm. to speak to us and i'm like what the boring usual lectures <laughs> <laughs> well i we said okay fine so they came in and um had a friendly game with us mm-hmm. And um, besides the friendly, they then talk to us about stuff, you know, adolescents, early pregnancies. Mm. And it was inspiring. And they're all telling us, you know, they all came from different spheres. Some were teachers, some were worked in a bank, like really different. All the the ladies on the team. And I was like, this is pretty cool. And they were like, you guys can be like us Mm. if you keep focus. Okay. Sport has kept us focused. So we were quite inspired. But they used to do that good go to schools to empower the girl child Mm -hmm. but also look for talent so I was sort of identified as one of the people with talent to join the team. So you were like scouted? I was scouted, more like scouted Mm -hmm. so holidays I used to work out with them, train with them and all that so when I got done with school I then joined them like full time Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. how I used to balance it was work of course morning till 5 and then go and work out after 5 like from 5.30 to about 8 p.m three to four times a week training and then you have league games during the weekends and sometimes during the week so it was nice um and besides what i like about a1 challenge mm-hmm. is besides playing basketball <coughs> the vision was to use sport to empower the girl child mm-hmm. so what exactly what they did i'm a product of of the outreach program mm-hmm. and uh, what they did i also continued to do it when i joined the team mm-hmm. so fast forward player i played a lot in the league um became a, a captain at some point then now the team manager and we're still pushing the mission so going out empowering the girl child oh, well done. using sport using sport yeah i love the sound of that okay i'm going to ask you now for your next song your next request which is a baby cool and salty soul mm-hmm. why did you pick this baby song? cool um you know like i said it's it's so tough to stay relevant in this industry mm-hmm. so 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 tough and i have much enough respect for baby cool <laughs> Okay, so, uh, wow. Sounds like you've been a very busy lady. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> like you've been a very but busy is good. Busy is good because <laughs> clearly, I mean, I think you, you're you used to being busy. Because yes, I am. And I am a workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. I didn't put it. I did not put I the am. words in her mouth. I am. I really you're a workaholic? Am. Yes, I am. So if you find yourself with free time and nothing to do, are you the kind you start biting your nails? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm always trying to get busy doing something, sorting this, sorting that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm. you're engaged at the moment, yes? Yes, yes I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> and um, unfortunately for you, you found yourself recently in the tabloids. Mm-hmm. Um, coming from most people just knowing you only as DJ Carol, all of a sudden, you know, you're in the tabloids <coughs> because you're, you're dating Cedric Babu. Mm-hmm. Um, that must have been a very turbulent time for you. Yeah. Because one of the things I noticed was that you kind of just, you know, kept quiet about it. I think sometimes it's better to keep quiet <laughs> about things when, when things mm. like that happen. But yeah, it was a tough time. Mm. But I mean, we're here now. and Because um, I mean, even though, I mean, of course, uh, everything went crazy on Twitter. Um, he was very, very outspoken mm-hmm. about it the whole time so you i guess that's the thing about the two of you you were quiet but he was very very straightforward like you are the lady in his life and he's very ex- outspoken even now on social media he's always posting about <laughs> you which of course you know uh how, yes. did you meet when you were uh, at the time that kinetic was managing you or had you known him before that 
um, we met, we well, it been Kinetic was one of my clients too. As so well, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I used to do a couple of events or oh, manage their social media too. Mm-hmm. So yes, we had met uh, before. Okay, all right. So has it been difficult for you after that happened? Um, I'm saying that happened as in it just came out in the tabloids that way. But for people who knew you, yeah. they actually had known for quite a while that you were a couple and that you were dating. Of course, it was tough. But um, again, you want to focus on the other side of it and not focus so much. Of course, there's, there's lots of talk. Like mm. you said, the tabloids and people are saying this and that. But there's you don't have so much control over that. Mm. And you can't start explaining yourself to the whole country and all the press and so you know you just let it blow over and some other things come up and you move on with life you move yeah. on i'm asking you this because there'll be very many other people very many other women who might might, might find themselves in the in same, the same position situation they yeah. don't know how to handle it mm. so um you're engaged any dates have been set <laughs> um not yet <laughs> 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 Not yet. Hmm. <laughs> These engagements yes, that have dates have been said, <laughs> but maybe I'm um, not about to talk about it as yet. <laughs> Okay, she's not going to tell you guys, but I'm going to ask on my own <laughs> later. Okay. <laughs> so um, normally I ask like people, you know, when you when you meet someone that you're in love with, what it is about them that you know that you fell in love with, and one of the things we've talked about is how sporty you are, and he also. <laughs> Is sporty. It's so sporty. Was that one of the things that you know drew you together? Um, yeah, that's one of the things. The sports bit. Um, he is a very good person too, character-wise, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and um, he supports whatever I put my fingers mm. to. He so he's very supportive in everything that I do. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, and then I mean we relate because of sports. Mm-hmm. Because he does have a good sense of humor too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So you know, um, normally I like to ask what you've learned, you know, on your journey along the way, um, going into music, trying different things. You know, you talked about how sports has really helped you in life and has opened up so many opportunities for you. Mm-hmm. So what would your advice be, you know, for people figuring mm-hmm. out this thing called life out? To um. With life, I think if you put your mind to something, you have to be ruthless, persistent, and have razor focus. Hey, uh, did I you mean, just say that? <laughs> <laughs> ruthless, yeah. ruthless, persistent. persistent. Mm-hmm. Because we, we really have a tendency of people giving up too soon because it hasn't gone right the first time. But mm-hmm. there's always plan B, C. But if you have that persistence and razor focus... It will work out. I mean, when I started, I had all sorts of people telling me, you'll never make it. I mean, really. Um, but look at me now, and I look at them, and I'm like, so what happened? Mm-hmm. So it's it's never really about what they think. That's mm-hmm. why, like I said, with all the press and stuff, I didn't have to explain myself to. But um, it's what you want to achieve mm-hmm. and how you're going to achieve it. And now when it comes to that step two of how you're going to achieve it, you're not going to you can't sit on the sidelines and expect results to happen Mm -hmm. you just can't Mm -hmm. you have to put in the work you have to put in the work and people forget that discipline is the most important thing because i believe it's the bridge between your goal and the accomplishment so i think um it's just putting your mind to something setting a target Mm -hmm. roll with it and do the work. Do it. Do the work. Do yeah. the work. Just do the work. Well, thank you so much for coming on Celeb Select. Thank you Such too, Such a Crystal. pleasure hosting you and sharing your story with us. And thank your you. last song, your last song is something from Elaine. Uh, it's a special song to you. Ja is so good. That lady, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine is like, she's very inspirational to me. She uh, Ja is so good. I mean, I am very... I'm a strong Christian. I believe in God. I put everything in God's hands, like everything. I'm a prayerful person, and mm. He's been so good to me. I mean, lots of things have have happened, lots of struggles, lots of challenges. Life is never really easy, mm-hmm. but He's still. I'm an imperfect person, but 
with a perfect god up there who is always looking out for me who is sees me through all this stuff and he keeps blessing me giving me favor so that song really means a lot i'm just saying ja is so good like there's so much is done in my life that i'm thankful for mm-hmm. and i continue putting him at the center of everything that i do okay yeah All right. thanks again for coming on the show thanks christo it's been a pleasure mm. yes indeed <laughs> ja is so good Nothing's in my hands, not in my head, no, I, Jack is so good to me, and I wait till the 